Let's play with uh, positioning. Hello, everybody. My name is Thomas Le Maire. I come from uh, INRIA, French Research Institute in Grenoble. My background is not FE simulation, but uh, computer graphic and uh, computer science uh, more generally. So I will present you uh, some work about the, the pre and fine positioning modules in the Piper application. The goal of this module is to to help you to define your desired position for your for your HBM. So either you will use visual targets to, to help you doing this positioning, or you can have some numerical values for joint angles, landmark positions, or even uh, anatomical frames orientation, like uh, for the pelvis, for instance. Or you, you will be also able to use a priori knowledge uh, about, uh, for instance, spine posture, as it will be uh, demonstrated later. I'm doing a very brief state of the art. I think we can split the approaches in two categories. First one are geometrical methods. Uh, it will be presented later by Anoop with the contour-based positioning. So there are really pragmatic solutions. You really know what you will get, but there are for sure other the methods, uh, inherent limitations, how to fulfill the HBM kinematics you would like to achieve, uh, what about soft tissue deformation? How could you tune this? And there is another bunch of methods. You may be more familiar with it. Simulation based. So I will skip the FEM simulation uh, as it is a state of the art of today uh, positioning process. And we'll concentrate of on the solution we implemented in those modules, which are meshless physics. So meshless means you don't have any elements and nodes uh, to to do the computation for the simulation, but rather uh, we are using other parameters. And this kind of method is coming from the computer graphic community. So in a few words, uh, the numerical method we are using is described in this publication. We, there are plenty of them, but this is, let's say, the most recent. So computer graphic meshless algorithm published in computer graphic conference, obviously. And uh, it is uh, based on the SOFA framework, which is an open source uh, library for doing this kind of simulation. So here we go in the, in the Piper application. So we have your, your model with the skin and the bones. So obviously for positioning, we only need to simulate the bones as rigid, which is the first set of degrees of freedom of our system. Then we need to, Im to imply some uh, kinematics, to impose some kinematics, so through uh, robotic joints. This is uh, generally what the people are using. But uh, to simulate uh, a better, uh, in a better way the deformation tissue, we are using affine frames. So an affine is affine transformation, so 12 parameters, and they locally uh, um, represent uh, affine transformation in space, so more or less locally, depending on what are the other uh, degrees of freedom around. And we also have support for uh, sliding contacts. For instance, the hip of the JHBMC is a uh, model like this. Uh, we have bone collisions that will limit the range of motion of uh, your HBM. And uh, the point in space coordinates are then computed uh, from a linear combination of the, DOF, the degrees of freedom of the system, which are affine frames, and rigid. So we built a system. Uh, this is called the KKT system. Uh, just please uh, read the paper if you are more interested. And uh, we have all the, the nice uh, state-of-the-art numerical methods uh, to solve constraints, to regularize the system, uh, to stabilize it. So all this implemented uh, in this SOFA library. So in the Piper application, this is, these are several modules. Um, so first one is the prepositioning, which is the most interactive one. So uh, we'll build the simulation from the geometry of your HGBM and the metadata that has been discussed this morning. So we need, uh, from the metadata, we need the bones and uh, the skin. The kinematics will be built from uh, anatomical or robotic joint. Uh, also sliding contacts. Also we have some patellar ligament distance constraint that can be used. Um, and the simulation is, will be driven by a few parameters I will detail, not too much, but uh, a bit after that. 
Uh, other metadata includes uh, the capsule and ligament entities. Um, during the development of the project, we, well, of course, the flesh is deforming the most around the joint that you are moving. And um, it may happen that the, the elements at those locations uh, get bad or low quality. So we need to have the flesh slides on the, on the bones. This is why we implemented this. And the ligament entities are inside the capsules and will get collision between the bone and the capsule and the ligaments to, have to respect some cinematics that you'd like to, to get. Um, we also have landmarks uh, that are being used to control the position, and they are also used to compute anatomical frames of reference, as defined in some papers, that you can control later on with, uh, within the module. And also, we, we make uh, intensive use of this anatomy database that was already mentioned earlier. So um, it is a catalog of names of entities landmarks, but more uh, than a catalog, you can infer some knowledge uh, f from your model to build the simulation, for instance, to know, to know which bones are close together to add collisions to, to those bones. So just, we go to the demo now. So I will show you some positioning, basic functionalities on the Chine model. I've just preloaded it. It takes 50 seconds on, on this laptop to, to position. One of the first thing you, you want to do uh, when positioning is to fix some bones. So this is kind of, this is your reference. Here I will choose to fix the lower extremities, so left and right leg. I will start using one of the main controllers, which is called the frame or frame to frame controllers. So I will control uh, from the, um, uh, with the reference being the origin of the world, I will control the position of the head. So the, the name is skull, uh, the skull entity. And I will uh, control its coordinates on X and Y, letting the Z free so that the, the altitude, or the eighth of the, the Z coordinate of the head will be controlled by the cinematic of the model. So the, the spine mainly. So here it is. I can display the frames that are here so they are inside uh, the skull, obviously. And I will move the head forward uh, by uh, 15 centimeters. OK. So I can start the simulation with this small GUI. I can control some of the parameters. I will deactivate collision because it, it runs faster without it. Uh, so for the demo. Um, so we get some, some result which correspond to this. So we, we get the actual result, the actual position, which is getting closer to, to our target. Uh, the next thing you can do is also with this controller is control the orientation of the head. So I will uh, move the head a little bit uh, forward, like uh, 10 degrees. Now it was the opposite, sorry. So I can tune the parameters. While the simulation is running, uh, it's a bit slower on the GUI, but uh, you can still do it. Uh. So you see the, the head is turning. OK. I will now demonstrate a, a mother controller, uh, the landmark controller. So with that one, I can control the XYZ position of a landmark. So the model defines already a, a, a set of landmarks. I will select this one, which is a forearm ML distal. OK, and I will control all three coordinates. I add the controller. So now I have this green sphere here that is the target. And I can move it in space. A and then start again the positioning. And I will have the, the hand moving, basically. The third controller we have in, uh, in the application is uh, a joint controller. So we'll apply it on the knee. So for this, I unfix uh, the, the bones which are related to, to the knee. I want them to move. Uh, I will select the joint controller. So for the left knee. OK. 
okay? So the joint is already defined the model with uh, three degrees of freedom. So this is the, the, the degrees of freedom that I can control with the joint control. Uh, again, I can have a display of the frames that are currently defining the anatomical, what, the, the joint, the robotic joint. Uh, and let's say we are doing some flexion here. And we get the flexion. Okay. Uh, maybe on that example, we are not happy with the, with the, with the ankle. So we can add a controller on the ankle. Thanks. Uh, and set it to be zero as uh, was the original position. Okay, so now I, I did this. Um, I have defined uh, the position of my HBM. You can think about the targets I have just defined, but you can think about the absolute position of landmarks or the bones that are defining this position. So there are several ways out of this module. Uh, the first one is from this module directly, you can deform your all the nodes of your model, which are the white dots. This is not the way I will choose now. I will create some targets that are being used by another module, which is more specialized in doing the FE transformation, the model HBM transformation. So for this, I will create all bone position targets. Okay, so I have now 45 targets. Um, in, in a normal way, I could directly go to the other module, but here, just to speed up the demo, I will export the targets in a file. So let's call it number two. And I have preloaded here the child model in the other module, which is a fine module. And I will um, load the targets. Just a few words of this on, on this module. Well, the first thing that tr strikes you is uh, you see the capsules here. So this uh, model, this module runs a very similar simulation as the other one, except that the parameters are tuned to get out of the module a better quality of uh, soft tissue deformation. So we add some soft tissue affins, the affin frame I, I mentioned, especially close to the joints and the capsules that, uh, that are here simulated. And I am able here to import the targets I've just saved. So this is a underscore two file, okay. So I have these uh, 45 targets here. Uh, I can load them into the module and, and then I can run the, the simulation well, it's similar interface as uh, the previous one. Here, we, we have collisions uh, between bone capsules and ligaments. Well, in this example, there is no ligament. But the collision for bones are deactivated since in the previous uh, simulation, you can have activated them and, and the position of the bones are supposed to be without collision. But there are parameters that you can tune, really. I'm just showing the normal way of uh, doing things. So I have loaded the target, they are there, and I can start the positioning process. So you see here, which is kind of, well, total error for all the, all the targets, which decreases. It's a measure uh, which uh, contains uh, both translation and rotation, so the, the absolute value itself doesn't really mean something. But we will get, at the end, the position that we had uh, defined in the pre-positioning module. So here it is. I will just switch back. Oops. So here was the position I, I had defined. And well, this is supposed to be the same. Uh, still, we have some target error. We can play with the stiffness of the constraint raise it a little bit to decrease that error. Okay, you don't see anything, but yeah. From this point, you can now update your HBM, so the same way you activate the computations of 
all the nodes of the model, and then you click and you choose a name to save it in the history of the Piper tool, like uh, posy one okay. And now it is updated in the, in the Piper application, and you can go to any other module, like smoothing module, or do some cridging or whatever, uh, change the parameters and follow your, uh, your workflow. That's it for, for, this, for this first demo. So just to recap, after the, the fine positioning process, sorry, the pre-positioning module, you can go to the fine positioning module. This is what I've just demonstrated. You can also go to the contour module with uh, is a special uh, positioning uh, facilities that will be presented. You can also uh, go to another path uh, to run full FE simulation that will be demonstrated by uh, Anise uh, just after. Just to highlight the differences between the pre and fine module since they really look similar and they are using the same numerical methods. So this is, no, no, this is what you would have got with the pre uh, positioning module and this is what you can get with the fine positioning module. So only parameters are, are changing. Um, so the pre-positioning is meant to be faster, to be loaded, and to, be, to have an interactive simulation, so you can really play with it. And uh, the, the fine um, positioning will load in uh, maybe four or five times uh, longer, and uh, well it's about four to five minutes on the child for the fine, and less than one minute for the child uh, for the prey, just to give you the, an idea. Uh, and as I mentioned, there are some just some parameters that change between the two. Um, in the algorithm uh, we are using, some uh, data are prepared in a 3D grid, so the geometry is rasterized into that grid, which means that uh, we can define the voxel size of the grid, which obviously is a parameter that will affect both the precision of uh, the deformation, like previously you can see this uh, aliasing effect of the voxels, um, and uh, will affect uh, the time to, to load the module. So this is the first parameter, which is here, voxel size, and then in the pre-positioning, you can have this voxel coarsening that will multiply the voxel size at some point to make it faster. Um, to get a better deformation of the sub-tissue, we also have uh, more affine frames. Well, by default, in the pre-positioning, there is no affine frames. Um, so here is, uh, it, it is controlled by the articular capsule. So when you activate it, you activate some affine frames that are added to the capsules. But you can also sample the affine frame into the full body or even have some custom affine that you define in your metadata to say, okay, at this place of my model, I really want a high quality deformation, so I put uh, more degrees of freedom. Um, and to do a nice transition with the next speaker, I haven't shown the demo, but uh, we'll just show some screenshots about a spine controller. So the, the idea is that you draw a target uh, line in 3D, so it's, uh, it's a spline. You can control with some control points here, so it's Bezier curve, uh, very traditional. So you draw it on your skeleton, uh, and this is a shape you would like the spine to have. So once you, you did this, you can, as I showed, uh, run the positioning process, and then you get a model for which the spine uh, has been positioned according to the spline you have just drawn. So just a few words about this uh, spine controller. So the pros is that it doesn't really require much more metadata than you already have. You just need a vertebrae, so the bone entity vertebrae. You can freely draw whatever crazy curve you want to, to, to get, and you, you are likely to, to get something. Um, but the cons are there is no physiological validation of this curve, since you are just drawing it freely. But if you want just to adjust to a seat, that might be a, a good solution, rather than positioning vertebra per vertebra. Uh, 